Hello everyone. In the last topic, we had covered about uh, the RH immunoglobulin, the routine anti-D prophylaxis, about uh, fetal maternal hemorrhage, and the algorithm involved in it. In this episode, we'll be calculating the dose of RH Ig, what we need to give, what are the methods to detect fetal maternal hemorrhage, and uh, how we go about actually, you know, in practical, which test to employ when, when do we do a flow cytometry, when do we do a rosette test or when do we do a, a quantitative like test like KB test. So I am Dr. Mohit Chaudhary and I'll be taking you through this uh, lecture on calculation of RHIG dose. This is TransConnect, March 2023. So let's start with this very important topic, a small topic, but I think it should cover all your doubts about the calculation of RHIG dose. It is, uh, it looks a little difficult, but if you just go through the lecture once, I think you will be able to solve the this problem of RHIG dose. So what are the methods for detection of FMH? The, the methods are qualitative methods and quantitative methods. The qualitative methods, uh, we categorically do the rosette test. This is, a, this is a test that will tell you whether it is positive or negative. So if it is positive, that means there is an FMH. And if it is a negative test, that means there is no FMH and you don't need to go further with the KV test. However, whether your rosette test comes positive or negative, you still have to give one full vial of RH immunoglobulin that is 300 microgram. That needs to be done irrespective of what, what whether it comes positive or negative. Once it comes positive, obviously you will move to a test like KB test. Of course, you can do another quantitative test and which is very sensitive and very good is flow cytometry, but provided you have that uh, in your institution. What is a rosette test? It is a screening test to detect the presence of RH positive RBCs in the circulation of RH negative person. It is a qualitative test. That means yes, no test. It will tell you whether the fetal maternal hemorrhage is present or not present. And the procedure involves the anti-D is added to the mother's washed RBCs. It is incubated, washed and then added with an R2, R2 indicator cells. The rosette formation takes place and if the specimen is giving positive result, there will be a rosette formation. Once that comes positive, you go for the KB test or Clairhall Becker test. It is uh, basically involves the principle involved in this is that hemoglobin F, uh, which is present in the fetus, is uh, resistant to the RBC's uh, elution. So whenever you add an acid acid elution, they'll, it'll be resistant to it. However, the normal HBA or the adult cells will actually lyse. So you will have normal cells from mother that are adult cells that will lyse, will, will look like a ghost cells, whereas HBF cells which are resistant or resilient to this acid elution and they will shine bright red. So this is how it will look like. You can see this bright red color. These are the fetal RBCs and in the background these silhouettes that you can see of the RBCs, these are called as ghost cells. Another picture of the same. So KB test here demonstrate massive fetal maternal hemorrhage. After acid elution treatment, fetal cells rich in HBF stain darkly, whereas mother cells or the HBA cells are like ghost cells. Coming to the main part of the topic, that is calculation of amount of RH immunoglobulin from the KB test. It is very simple. You just need to go through this once. And with the examples, try to calculate your own dose and uh, I think that should be it. So what you need to do is you need to count 2000 2, cells in the microscope after you have done the KB staining. So once you have that you have 2000 cells. So you calculate the number of fetal cells. Note it down like you do in a cell counter you note it down. You calculate the total blood volume of the mother. Suppose the weight of the mother is not there you can calculate it as or you can take it or presume it as 5 liter. So first thing you need to do is calculate the percentage of fetal hemorrhage. So how you do that it is very simple. Total number of fetal cells counted upon total cells counted into 100. That is suppose it is 40, 40 fetal cells out of 2000 cells that you have counted multiplied by 100 you get a percentage and that percentage is 2 percent here. Once you have the percentage, you have to know actual total fetal maternal hemorrhage. What is that hemorrhage or what is the hemorrhage in ML that has taken place? It is very simple. 
you know the total volume of the uh, total blood volume of the mother that is 5 liter presumably so you can multiply it by the fetal hemorrhage so for example if the fetal hemorrhage percentage was 2% you multiply it by 5000 divided by 100 which will give you 100 ml so that is the amount of fetal hemorrhage in ml now the main part of the exercise how to calculate the RHIGYs it is very simple we should know that one vial or 300 microgram that is the full dose of the vial will cover 30 ml of fetal whole blood that means one vial will cover 30 ml so suppose your total hemorrhage was 100 ml and you know one vial covers 30 ml you divide the same you will get a first this decimal a decimal value that is 3.3 or 3.2 or anything like that so this is the actual value on which now you will calculate the RHIG value it is very simple. You don't want to deal in decimals. You round it off. So suppose it is 3.3. It rounds off to 3. It is 3.6. It will round off to 4. Here it is 3.3. So once it is 3.3, you round it off to 3 and add one vial to it. And why do you add this one vial? It is very simple. You are adding this vial category categorically because this KB test is not very accurate. So you want to overdo it. So suppose it is 3, you add 1 while to it. Suppose it is 4, you add 1 while to it, it will become 5. So another example, suppose there is one fetal cells in the mother is 26. Here it is 26. So what is the percentage? It is 1.3, 26 upon 2000 into 100. Remember, you always calculate 2000 cells. So 100 ml mother blood will carry 1.3 ml. So by unitary method, you can calculate in 5 liter of total blood volume that is mother's total blood volume it will be 65 so you just divide 65 by 30 because that is the amount of blood one vial will cover or neutralize so the it will be 2.2 so now it is again 2.2 you round off simple maths 2.2 becomes 2 and add one vial to it and that is the total number of vials that you need so total number of vials that you need here is 3 remember if your rosette test is negative that means even if you are anticipating there is no FMH, you still have to give one vial. So that means either you will give the minimum is one vial or you will calculate the FMH and then calculate the number of vials. Always remember, always, always remember the half life of this RH immunoglobulin is 25 days. So you need to remember that. So calculation of RH IG safe dosage, it is the same thing. Suppose the dose that you have calculated or the decimal value that you have calculated is 2.2, you add 1 to it, 3. Suppose it is 2.6, you add, it becomes 3 and you add 1 to it, it becomes 4. So there is another method that you can do, quantitative method for fetal maternal hemorrhage estimation. It is the most sensitive of all methods. This is flow cytometry. It correctly quantifies FMH. It uses the human monoclonal anti-D and murine monoclonal anti-HBF. Many advanced centers have replaced it with the K from the KB test. But if you can't do it, KB test is fairly accurate. And how do you make it more accurate is you add one more vial to it. So BCSH guidelines also says that perform flow cytometry if you have FMH or uh, your KB KBT test or the K K blood K test is greater than 4 ml. Other methods for estimation are under evaluation like gel agglutination test and maternal AFT. So we are still a long way to you know standardize these tests till then you should know how to do a kb test and a flow cytometry test thank you so much i hope this simple topic of calculating the rh immunoglobulin dose was helpful to you if there is anything that you have not understood or you want me to repeat it you can just write a comment on this channel and we will try to address the same thank you so much keep on learning and keep telling us which topics we should take up next. Happy learning to all of you.